I am Peter Fisher, the coding teacher at howtocodewell.net. If you are learning Python, PHP, HTML, CSS, JavaScript, Docker, Linux, or anything else to do with web development, then do check out howtocodewell.net forward slash courses. Links are in the description below. Hello coders, in this video I'm going to demonstrate how to seed a Laravel application with data. We're going to be using the status checker Laravel application that I've been building on Twitch. I stream every Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday and Sunday at twitch.tv forward slash how to code well. I'll leave links to that as well as the GitHub repository for the status checker in the show notes below. First of all, let's take a look at the folder structure of our status checker. We have a config directory, the site directory. This is where the Laravel application lives. We also have a Docker compose file, a Docker file and a readme file. You can see all of this from the GitHub repository. Links are in the show notes below. And in the database directory, we have the migrations as well as the seeds. In this video, we're going to be focusing on seeding the database. To create our seeding file, we need to go inside the terminal of the container where the Laravel application is living. To do this, type docker hyphen compose exec site and bash. So exec will execute a command. We're going into the service called site and we're going to issue the command bash. So if we press enter, we are now inside the container. Once we're in the container, type ls to see the folder structure. We want to get inside the site directory. So type cd and then site. From here, type ls. Now we can see that we have the artisan command. Now we're going to use this to create our seeding file. To run the artisan command, type dot forward slash because we are in the current working directory and then artisan. The command that we wish to issue is make colon cedar, and then we need to give an argument. Now this argument is going to be the class of the cedar file that we're going to create. And in this case, we're going to use site table cedar. Press enter and this will create our seeding file. If we come out of the terminal, we can see that we have a new file created called site table cedar within the seeds directory. Let's open up that file. What I would like to do is seed the database with some data. The first thing I'm going to do is create a dataset array. This is a private property of the cedar table class. This dataset array is going to contain all of the data that I want to insert into the site table. So we're going to create three records in our site table. The first record is going to be for the howtocodewell.net main site. The second record is going to be for the howtocodewell.fm podcast site. And the third site is going to be Docker in motion. In the run function, what we need to do is loop over this data set and insert a record into the database. To do this, type for each data set as data and then db table, supply the table name, and in this case, it's going to be site. After the parentheses, add an arrow symbol and then call the insert method against the db class. The argument of the insert method is an array of values. So let's add some square brackets. Inside the square brackets, press enter. Inside the array, add a key of name, and its value is going to be data and then the name of that record. Add a comma and then under this, add another key, which is going to be URL. Its value is going to be data and then URL like so. Make sure that you add a semicolon on the end of this bracket. We've now created our seeding file. The next thing we need to do is run the artisan command that will seed this data into the database. And effectively, this will run an insert query, inserting each of these records into the site table. In the terminal, we need to type artisan db seeder. So let's remove the previous command. 
we need to replace that command with db colon seed. We also need to give an argument that tells Artisan which seeding file we want to run. And we do this by typing hyphen hyphen class is equal to the seeding file that we've created. In this case, it is the site table seeder. Press enter. And we can see that we have the output of database seeding completed successfully. Let's take a look at the database to see what has happened. Come out of the site container by typing exit. We now want to go inside the database container. To do this, type docker hyphen compose exec, and this time we want to run against the db container. We want to go inside as MySQL, so type MySQL hyphen u, and then the username of root, and then hyphen p. If we press enter, we should be prompted for our password. Put in the password of the database, and then press enter. Now we're inside the MySQL prompt. We need to tell MySQL which database we want to use. And in this case, the database is called status checker. So let's type use and status underscore checker. Press enter and we can see that the database has changed. Let's now run a select query against the site table. So type select all from site. Make sure to add a semicolon on the end of this query. Press enter and we can see that we have three records in this database. The first one is the how to code well main site. That's how to code well.net. The second one is the how to code well podcast site, which is how to code well.fm. And the third one is Docker in motion, which is dockerinmotion.com. To come out of the database container, type exit. You may have noticed an easier and more efficient way of seeding the database using our class. And this is because we don't need this loop. What we're doing here is we're looping over the data set array. We're then pulling out the data name and data URL of the nested arrays within the data set array. If I scroll right to the top here, we can see that we have the data set here. This is a record, this is a record, and this is a record. Each of those are arrays within the data set array. And as you may have gathered, we could pass an array to the insert method. Let's remove this for each loop. Let's also remove this array that we're supplying to the insert method. Let's now insert the whole data set. So type this arrow symbol data set, press save, and then let's open up the terminal once more. First, let's go ahead and delete the records that we previously added to the site table. So let's go into the database container, enter the password as before, use the database, and then from the MySQL prompt, run the query delete from site. And then make sure you have a semicolon on the end. Press enter and that will delete the three records that we added to the site table using that seeding command. Let's come out of MySQL, so type exit. Let's go back into the site container and then go inside the site directory. Let's now run that seeding command again. We get the successful output of database seeding completed successfully. So now let's come out of this container. Let's go back into the database container. Add the password as before. Use the database and type select all from site. Make sure to put a semicolon on the end and press enter. And here we can see the three records added to the table. So to recap, what we did is we created a seeding file in our Laravel application. The seeding file was created using the artisan command, which is make seeder. And then the argument is the class of the seeding file that you want to create. We then created a nested array of all the data that we wanted to seed. We were using the site table, which I had 
previously created in one of my Twitch streams. Once the database was created, we went back into the site container and ran that seeding command, db colon seed. We passed the class of the seeding file that we wanted to use. That populated the site table. I then demonstrated a more efficient and easier way of running our seeding command by not using the for each loop. If you would like to see the progress of this application, then please do check out the Twitch streams. That's twitch.tv forward slash how to code well. I usually stream on Tuesdays, Wednesdays, Thursdays, as well as Sundays. There is also a Discord server. And if you want to support the channel, either being a Patreon or a Twitch subscriber, you will get access to the pro user channel as well as the voice chat as well. This is where I'm going to have conversations with the community of how to code well. There's also a channel for coding help. So if you have any particular problems or any questions to do with coding, then do check that out as well. Thanks for watching. Happy coding everyone. And I'll see you again soon. Cheers. Bye.